Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 25 September 2017. Have a from the sharpening bench video for you guys tonight. This is an interesting one, I think. The knife is manufactured by Viper Techno Cut in Maniago, Italia. And it is a Rick Hinderer design. How about that? And here's the knife. So it is the Viper Storm. Hinderer design in Bowler M390 steel. Rather an interesting blade, I must say. This comes to us uh, sort of at the end of a wave of new stuff from Hinderer. Uh, let's see, there was the half track, I think one called the MP1, uh, half track sub three inch blade, MP1, about a three and three eighths inch blade, and then this Viper Storm, which borrows some styling cues from each of those two in a three, just over three and an eighth inch blade. Okay. Frankly, I hate to say this, but uh, the new designs, the new design cues elements from Hinderer that have brought us the half track and the MP1, you know, if I were a Hinderer fan, and I've heard Hinderer fans who have gotten these knives and, you know, talked about how nice they are, um, I would have a hard time loving them. Uh, when you think about the elegance and functionality of the designs of the XM series, the XM18, XM24, and then the unbelievable stunning beauty of the Eclipse, and then you look at a knife of this design, even rather jazzed up by Viper. You know, Viper can make about anything look good. They, they're just sort of a face only a mother can love, I guess. Um, it, it, I was thinking about this as I was peeing earlier. How am I going to describe this? You know, I like to give outlandish examples. I am a lifelong Chicago Bears fan, okay? And... <laughs> As I look at the Hinderer half track specifically, not so much this knife, but the half track specifically, if I put myself in the position of a Hinderer fanboy, trying to find a reason to like the half track as a knife is a lot like trying to convince myself as a Bear fan that Rex Grossman and Jay Cutler were good quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as good as I can do for that analogy. You know, the, the XMs and the Eclipse, just ergonomic wet dreams. Let's face it, they are. Um, the Half Track, horrible ergos. The MP1 better. Uh, the Viper Storm, kind of in between. Um, before I get into construction, I just have to talk about this because it's on the front of my brain. There's a lot of nice stuff about this knife. But there's some really funky stuff that doesn't make much sense to me. Um, ergonomically, the saber grip, I'll do this in the correct hand for the clip orientation. Um, the saber grip is really secure and feels really good. Any other grip, um, I just I find handle not to be there in areas I want it. And I find a handle that pokes me in areas that I don't want it to. Um, I think this is a for a function follows form, and from a long way back, kind of a knife. Um, it's got sort of an industrial theme, uh, interesting construction. We'll just sort of start with the blade and work our way back. We have a saber ground, harpooned and swedged drop point blade, a uh, little over three of an, three and an eighth inches in length, of I think very robust stock given the grind and the height of the blade. It's a little over five thirty seconds, four uh, four millimeters in thickness. The grind starts very low and doesn't get very thin. 
I sharpened this knife at 18 degrees per side and you can see it's a pretty broad bevel. This might even be 19. Um, behind my secondary bevel the knife is about 35 36 thousandths thick. So it's like all hinderer in thickness which is to say too thick. Uh, for a 3 and an eighth inch EDC blade it, the blade's just too fat. Um, nicely made. <clears throat> Attractive to look at is the blade just too fat and of course as usual with I don't know, let's say 85% of the manufacturers They didn't quite finish the plunge grind <clears throat> uh, Before the choil ended I did not enhance this one at all and we got a little bit of flaring and a little bit of a, a little bit of a drop <clears throat> A little bit of a recurve caused by that Nice satin finish. I hope the thumb studs are usable. They are, because they're not blade stops on this knife. Very uh, Sebenza-like thumb studs, which everybody knows are impossible to use. Uh, they have uh, volcano issues. Your thumb either, you know, they either dig into your thumb in an uncomfortable way or your thumb slips off of them. Um, I I'm sorry, nothing fancy. That's just not the case. The thumb studs are awesome. They work great. But any way your thumb comes into contact with them, that, that small domed peak just sort of bites into your skin and gives you purchase to flick the knife open. It's also a flipper. It's also on cage ball bearings, as you might guess. The flipping action of the knife is quite good. Uh, it will it will light switch but it really kind of likes to push button notice how the axis of the flipper is just behind the center line of the pivot so you can grab that jimping right on the top of the flipper and push straight down and out she flies nicely done blade centering on this one seems to wander just a bit it's usually on the money. Sometimes it's a little off away from the lock. As it sits right now, it might be a little off away from the lock. It is a titanium frame lock with no steel insert and the carbon fiber, which is beautiful satin finished carbon fiber. The carbon fiber scales serve as your over travel stop. No need for a hinder or lock bar stabilizer on this knife. Non-inserted. Just titanium and a detent ball. I got to believe it does not feel like that lock bar is carbidized. It doesn't have that, you know, chunky, rocky, granular feel to it. Uh, I didn't look at the end of it when it was apart, but I got to believe it is carburized like a Sebenza. So you got these carbon fiber scales around an intricately machined and detailed titanium frame <clears throat> with tip up left or right hand carry and a genuine hinderer titanium pocket clip. We have our filler tab for the unused clip mount. Now this I think is kind of interesting and the knife does not require a backspacer. It has two standoffs that are structurally complete as is, but this knife employs the Hinderer Modular Backspacer System, HMBS. <laughs> and you know, you could, you could drop the Hinderer and just call it an MBS, or you could drop the Hinderer and the Modular and then you are just left with BS. Uh-huh. Because um, it, it's either really cool or really hokey. I haven't made up my mind. So what it is, it's a backspacer that isn't needed to space the back. Okay, so it's a decorative piece. And with this supplied hex key, Allen wrench, you can loosen the set screw. And what, what this is, it's like a little needle valve that runs down one side of one of the standoffs and locks that thing into place and it just pops right out a little blue anodized titanium spacer 
This one is the lanyard loop backspacer. There's also a more flush backspacer that they offer, not stock with the knife, but uh, there is one available. I've seen them. And then one with a bottle opener. Yeah. So you can, you know, drop, what, 40 or 50 bucks per for nice little pieces of water jetted and anodized titanium because you got to have that stuff. I mean, you got to have a lanyard loop and you got to have a bottle opener, for goodness sake. All right. Clever, clever product merchandising by Hindler, Hinderer, I got to say. And uh, I think, you know, Hinderer was kind of set up for new models and new hardware because, you know, the pocket clips, standoffs, different color anodized titanium hardware has sort of always been part of the Hinderer product line. So expanding that just makes sense. Um, so let's see. We've talked about the frame, we've talked about the backspacer, we've talked about the scales. We briefly mentioned the clip. And it's a standard hinderer clip. I get that. It's a great pocket clip. However, when you're rocking the lanyard loop backspacer, that's how far the knife goes in your pocket. There is a full one inch of knife sticking up out of your pocket one whole inch on a frame that is four and a quarter inches long four and a half uh, with the lanyard loop so that's kind of a lot i think it sits deeper in the pocket if you go <clears throat> oh you can't go tip down on this one so you know there it is one thing i want to look up i forgot to before this video i wanted to look up how much the doggone things cost. Because, you know, we ought to know that. Well, there we go. So, you know, most hinderer made hinderer knives, somewhere between four and four, four hundred and four hundred and fifty dollars, right? This Viper made Storm 220, 219.95 at Blade HQ. So that makes sense to me. I'm not sure, you know, what happened with that long, long partnership with Hinderer and Zero Tolerance, but apparently that has gone by the wayside, and now Viper is the mass production outlet for Hinderer designs. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. That Viper does great work. Seems like they're hitting about the same price point that they would with ZT. <clears throat> And because this is Bowler M390 steel, it takes a ferocious edge. Even at rather wedgy geometry, I mean, granted this is paper, it's not an apple. It's very slicey. I think it's even, I believe it's even push cutty. Let's see. It is. That's pretty good stuff, M390. Can't really fault the steel. I do think, although this is a credible knife, um, some of the styling choices don't work ergonomically. And as you know, I'm, I've always long been a, uh, a detractor to hinderer blade profiles. I think they're just too doggone thick especially in a smallish knife like this one. Um, don't know. I guess the herd will like it, though. You know, if you're a Hinderer fan, it's not a horrible knife. I just think uh, it seems to me that... Uh, I hate to say this, but... It's almost like Rick Hinderer was kind of a one-trick design pony. Maybe two with the XMs and the Eclipses and this angular geometric industrial thing he's got going now just isn't working for me. It might be working for you. I don't like that we have a large choil that neither accommodates a finger nor does it get to the end of the plunge grind. I think that's just sort of a waste of real estate. But. 
I'm not sure why they went that way. Hmm. <coughs> it seems to be mechanically sound, however. And you get to play with hardware colors and backspacer configurations and all that stuff. I bet you they'll sell. Probably not to me, but I bet you they'll sell. That is all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word. And Scott's storm are sharp. <laughs>